Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the next question. Okay, so this question belongs to GATE CSC 2017 set 1 guys. The given question is a multi-threaded program P executes with X number of threads and uses Y number of locks for ensuring the mutual exclusion while operating on shared memory locations. So all locks in the process are non retained that is if a thread holds a particular lock then it can cannot reacquire that lock l without releasing it so basically if you want to acquire a lock you need to release your old locks and only then you can indirectly acquire the new lock right so that's what indirectly they are saying right yes so if a thread is unable to acquire a lock it it blocks until the lock becomes available okay so the minimum value of x and the minimum value of y together for which executing of a P can result in deadlock. Okay. So we are indirectly, we want to get into deadlock, right? Yes. Okay. So let us read the question once again, because in the options, they directly give the values of X and Y and they are saying that which of the following will form deadlock means indirectly there are three answers here, which will not form deadlock, right? Yes. So let us read the question once again. So, a multi-threaded program P executing with the X number of threads. So option A says that there is only one thread. Option B says that there are two threads T1 and T2. Option C says that there are two threads T1 and T2. Option D says that there is only one thread T1. Okay. And uses Y number of locks for ensuring mutual exclusion. So here we are having L1 and L2. Here we are having only L1. Here we are having L1, L2. Here we are having only L1. Okay. And now what they are saying is all locks in the program are not re retainment. So if a thread holds a particular lock, it cannot reacquire a lock L without releasing it. So basically if this is already acquired by T1, and if it wants one more copy of it or one more of it, so indirectly it should release this first and then reacquire it. So if a thread is unable to acquire a lock, okay, so if it is unable to acquire a lock, indirectly it will go into the blocked state and only when it is released, so it will continue again. So now what they are asking is what is the minimum number of X and minimum number of Y to form a deadlock? Okay, so I think just by observing the question, we can eliminate few options guys. Okay, so when it comes to when we are having a single thread. Okay, so we are having two cases with single thread, right? Yes, so when we are having a single thread, the advantage with single thread and two locks is, so assume that your processor has a locked once and it wants one more lock. So once this lock is done, so it will, it is having one more option with another lock. So hence, here there is a very less chance that it could lead to a deadlock, right? Yes. And when it comes to this case, here we are having only a single lock. So if I lock here, if I want to lock one more variable indirectly, I am forced to release this, right? So indirectly, because here there is no other lock available, this might go into blocked and this might cause a deadlock, right? Yes. So let us check option C and D also. So when it comes to option B, option B has two threads, right? So here, if T1 is holding L1, that is nothing but lock one. So it locked and it started execution. So suddenly it requires one more uh, lock. So it will release this particular lock and this particular lock might be used by T2 and it might execute and it might leave and there could be no issue, right? So that is the reason why I think this will not have that much issue. And similarly, when there are two, two, once the execution is done, if it requires one more lock, then this lock will be done. So here, the only chance which I think that option D could be the more potential correct answer, right? Because at that time, whenever we are having one process and one lock, there is a high chance that it might lead to a deadlock, right? Yes. So I hope everyone got a clear idea with respect to this question, right? So the main reason to be clear is nothing but with respect to this non-retention guys. So basically normal retention means you are going to use the same lock multiple times. But when they told it is non-retention, we are forced to use a new lock. But here we are not having that new lock in this particular case. 
so that is the reason why this my this will lead lead to a deadlock and a few students will be like okay so the same case can be applied here also right but the case here is here we are having two threads so if this thread is blocked this thread might run and it might resolve that deadlock right yes so that is the reason why the most highest potential answer will be d guys got it yes so it's a quite interesting question but it's a bit of a complex question also as well as right yes so i hope everyone got a clear idea with respect to this so in the next lecture let us continue with the next question thank you thanks for watching like share and subscribe for more awesome videos like this thank you